Good morning, everybody. We're just going to give one moment for everyone to filter in. Um, we're excited to have you all here with us. So my name is Isabella Young. I'm a first year master's student at Tufts University um, in the Division of Food and Nutrition Policy and Programming, and I will be moderating the session this morning. We wanted to let you all know that this session is being recorded for potential publishing on our symposium website. So please modify your name and or shut off your video if you do not wish to be recorded. We ask that all attendees keep their audio off unless prompted during a question and answer session. We will be finishing the session 10 minutes before the next hour to allow for a short break. Um, and now I have the honor of presenting our speaker. Amin is a postdoctoral fellow in the Division of Agriculture, Food and Environment at the Friedman School of Nutrition at Tufts University. He has experienced working on sustainability related projects um, on three different continents in Belgium and Europe, South Korea and Asia and in the United States and North America. He has published more than 40 scientific papers in some high impact journals such as Renewable and Sustainable Energy Reviews with an impact factor of 17 and the Journal of Cleaner Produ Production with an impact factor of 11. His current research interests are the development of life cycle assessment methodologies and circular economy and food systems. So I'm gonna pass it over to him to begin his session. Thank you, Isabella, for the introduction. Good morning, good, good afternoon, good, good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining to Life Cycle Assessment Workshop or LCA Workshop. From now on, when I say LCA, I mean Life Cycle Assessment. So let me share my screen. So I started with a short introduction of myself. Um, I mean, I mean, Nicole, I got my PhD from Ghent University. I joined Tufts University like seven months ago. I've been working on life cycle assessment for seven, like more than seven years. I've developed like LCA inventory for a lot of products like edible insects, olive, bioenergy, tropical crops, municipal solid waste. But before we start this session, I would like to ask you a question. I want to make it more interactive. I don't, I don't want it to be boring. I want it to be practical and easy to understand. So before we start, I would ask everybody, please just go to menti.com. Just search menti.com. And then uh, there is a question that I would like you to, to answer. This is, this is the question. What do you expect to learn in this workshop? I wanna know which part of this workshop I need to focus on more. So could you please go and answer, just go to menti.com, insert this code and just choose one of the, one of the uh, items. You can, also, you can also write it down in the chat box or answer all. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna talk about everything. We have only for 45 minutes, but uh, so I'm, I'm gonna make it practical. So I'll show you how to run an LCA model on, on a software. Uh, so let's see if anybody has. So basic knowledge of sustainable. Yeah, I, I want, I actually I made it easy to be understandable for like everybody on the call. So basic knowledge of sustainability introduction to LCA. We start with basic knowledge of sustainability, but I'm, I'm not gonna talk a lot about this sustainability thing. So I assume some of you already know about this basic of sustainability science and then introduction to LCA and LC software. Actually, we're gonna do an LC, an LC study on lab grown meat today and then interpretation of results. So let's start the workshop. So we start with interaction between food and environment, right? So there is, there is interaction, interaction between food and environment. In environment or climate has effect on food. So what are the, what are the effects of environment or climate on food? Like we have this global warming and then it leads to like heat, unpredictable heat waves, floods, or uh, other issues. For example, some like farmers are producing rice somewhere in Malaysia, so rice can be 
only grown in the temperature from zero to 30, but now the temperature is reaching 30, 33, 34, 35. They cannot, uh, they cannot grow rice anymore there, right? So what does that mean? It means less food. So if we have less food, we have more hungry people in the world. So, they, they, so climate has an effect on food production systems. Uh, in return, food also has effect on environment. So when we, call, when we use life cycle as assessment methodology, we study the effect of food on environment. So this, this LCA methodology, it is being used to study the environmental impacts of food production system. But what is this environmental impact of food production system? So but a lot of people, they, they, they might, they don't know about this issue, but one third of total greenhouse gas emissions coming from food production, from food we eat. There is a recent uh, nature paper, it's, it was published like a, a week ago, they, they indicated that only food production system can increase the global warming potential coming from this food system, can, can increase the global temperature by one degree by 2100, only food production system. And it is responsible for one third of total greenhouse gas emissions. So before we start uh, this LCA analysis, I wanna give you some scientific uh, facts. Food supply chain is biggest producer of methane is biggest producer of nitrous oxide too. And the, the greenhouse gas emission of only rice production, I'm not talking about soy, other agricultural production, uh, products, only rice is equal to whole aviation system. Only rice production equal to whole aviation sector. So what are the, this greenhouse gas emission? There are uh, carbon dioxide, everybody know, and then the met methane, and nitrous oxide. So this, this food production system is the major emitter of these two greenhouse gas emissions. Number, I call, uh, food production system is number one, uh, methane and nitrous oxide emission. So what we can do about this? First of all, we need to measure this greenhouse gas emission, but gets measured, gets manage right and then we, we need to raise awareness about this greenhouse gas emissions uh, of food production system because a lot of people they know about the, like the environmental impacts of the air traveling a lot of issue the energy uh, energy consumption but not a lot of people they know about this greenhouse gas emission of the food the food they eat like meat, rice, or whatever. This is where we use this life cycle assessment methodology. There are different methodologies. So LCA is only one of the methodology that can be used for, uh, for evaluating the environmental impacts. So like material, material flow analysis, there are like plenty of methodology, but I'm working for the last seven years only on life cycle assessments. So, why, why, why I and a lot of people, they think LCA is the best methodology because this is based on uh, ISO standard and it's studied the cradle to grave environmental impacts. So when we say cradle to grave, let's say, so we're gonna study the environmental impacts of meat production, right? So the soybean that are, that are, that are fed to, the, to this livestock, the fertilizer, uh, consumption in the grain production that ev eventually we use to feed this livestock. So they're all in this LCA analysis of meat production. So from cradle to grave, like everything. So the first application of life cycle assessment was 50 years ago. So we have a methodology that we are using for more than 50 years. So this Methodology has been evolved. So the first, if you look at the first uh, application of us, it, it, it was super simple, but it is getting complicated. So we have this LCA bank, there are lots of LCA studies out there. And uh, 
before I started this workshop, I, I was curious how many uh, papers exist on this LCA methodology. So instead of just searching, I just ask ChatGPT. So it is at least it is at least twelve thousand papers, published papers. I'm not talking about reports, only scientific papers on life cycle assessment because you can use life cycle assessment on everything. It's not only for food production. So I, I, I mentioned this is based on based on ISO standards. So we have this four standard in, in uh, 1996. It was updated in 2006. So if you want to do a LC analysis first, you need to have these two ISO standard. The LC is also a core methodology to evaluate the carbon footprint in European Union. So it has been accepted by uh, researchers for more than 50 years. It has been accepted by policy makers, manufacturers, everybody. We have also 1,000 papers on LCA. So we have a huge bank of environmental impacts assessment using the LCA. So what are the benefits of LCA? So first, we identify the opportunities to improve this environmental performance. And then we inform decision makers. And we select relevant indicators of environmental performance. And another thing is marketing, eco label. So every single food product, you see there is a nutritional fact or nutritional properties on it, on it, right? So in future, so my prediction is 10 years, you will see also the, the environmental labeling on every single product you buy. So let's start this LCA methodology. So it consists of four different steps. It starts with goal and scope definition, and then we do an inventory analysis, impact assessment, and at the end, there is this interpretation of the result we have got. So in the goal and scope definition, we define the goal. So it's clear from the name. So define the goal, functional unit, system boundary, I explain what, is function, what functional unit is, what system boundary is, and then we move toward inventory analysis and then impact assessment and interpretation. Let's start with goal and scope definition. So we define the goal. For example, the goal of this study is to, uh, to evaluate the environmental impacts of meat production, right? Then we have functional units. So what is this functional unit? So, so functional unit refers to product service or system whose impacts are calculated by a, a, an LC study. So what can be a functional unit for meat production, it can be one kilogram of produced meat or one package of meat or one kilogram protein inside meat or based on one dollar uh, of the price of each uh, kilogram, you know, one dollar of income in meat production system. So economic functional unit. So we have biomass like one kilogram, one package, economic like one dollar. Uh, energy like based on 100 megajoule or one calorie. Based on nutrients, it can be protein, vitamin or whatever, and land. So this is, so let's say we are comparing the one organic product with conventional one. So this functional use selection is super important. So let's say we, we are comparing organic apple production system with the conventional one. A conventional one. So if the functional unit is one kil kilogram, so which one you think would be more environmentally friendly? Yeah, I would appreciate if, uh, if, if you just answer it in the chat box or you can unmute yourself, just jump in and answer the question. So if the functional unit, nice, no, yeah, somebody answers, yeah, if the functional unit is uh, one kilogram, for sure, the conventional one, because, because the yield of conventional system is higher than organic one. So how about if the functional unit is, is land-based, based on one, one, hect one hectare, one acre or whatever? Oh, 
one, one square meter, one acre, which one would be more, more environment? So in this case, organic is more environment. So this is important. So if if you change different function and you make it totally like different result, there is there is <clears throat> sorry, there is a nature paper paper on this on this subject. So the best way is to, to just include like as many functional units as you can. Another example, if you compare these two snacks, like apple, organic or apple and tomato chips, which one is <clears throat> More environmentally friendly, probably to, uh, potato chips, right? And then, but if uh, the functional unit is nutrient based, then alpha will be more environmentally friendly. And then, system boundary. So, system boundary is the conceptual line that divides the system that you want to study from everything else. So, let's say here, if you want to do the whole LCA, so you need to go to Argentina to measure the, uh, to estimate the environmental impacts of soybean, go somewhere, I don't know, in Asia to, it's, it's, it's not doable, right? So we have this summary, like somebody can just study the soybean production. This is the, stuff, this is the system boundary for that person from cradle to farm gates. This is the system boundary. Somebody only for a specific fertilizer production. And you may say, you may have everything, something is, is missing like packaging. You do packaging and then you do a whole LCA. You include all the results from other studies in your studies too. So this study, we call it cradle to grave environmental impact assessment, but actually it's not cradle to grave because if you want to do cradle to grave of meat, it takes forever. So, but we have like the database for, for example, in this case, soybean for fertilizer, for grain. So the only thing in this case, you need to uh, get the data is to, to collect data only in this process or in the slaughterhouse or whatever, which is missing or depending on your case study, you can just, for example, there's there's this data like for grain production soybean you don't have like farm information you have you, there's a study on in Denmark you are doing in, in the US so you just collect the data for this part and then use these databases and um, there's there's also another thing called allocation uh, allocation approach, right? So we have also biomass and economic uh, allocation. This is one example. So we have we have rice production system. What, what is the output in a rice production system? It's rice by itself and it's rice by for the rice straw, right? So in terms of like biomass, it has more yield than rice, but we do economic allocation. We say, look, 50, 85% of environmental impacts goes to the main product and the, the, the rest goes to the byproduct. This is called allocation. So in the case of meat production, what, what is how, how we do this allocation? Approach? This only is in most meat production system. The only product is meat. There is no need to do this allocation, but in the case of rice, we have two outputs because we can also sell the byproduct as animal feed. And then we have this life cycle inventory analysis. So life cycle in inventory in this phase, we collect the, the raw data, like the input consumption for that production system. And then we estimate the emissions. So in the inventory analysis, collection of raw data, and then in estimation of the emissions, like how, how much CO2, CO2 is emitted, how much methane, how much nitrous oxide and the rest. And uh, so this is one example. For example, you have this data on meal production. So we know, no, we know nine, nine uh, liters of diesel fuel is being used to produce one ton of milk, right? So here is the emission coefficients for, for diesel fuel. So we know per, per each, per each uh, uh, megajoule of uh, 
carbon dioxide consumption, this is the amount of carbon dioxide emission, right? So we have this, you just multiply it, this one, you just, you just multiply uh, this by this one to, to measure the, the emissions of CO2, right? But you don't need to do it by yourself. You do, we use databases. So what are those, these databases? The most famous one, Equivent, USLCI, Agri Footprint is really good. So these databases, they are, they are on the software we use. So we don't need to, but if you use open LCI, you need to get it like from different sources. But if you just buy CMO Pro license, you have all these databases on the software. It makes it super easy. I'll show you. And so this is this is this rice rice example. So we have this rice production yield and byproduct. So the inputs which are being used in this system, you can see here. You it is written US or RER or GE. So this is the name of the country, like water database from US. It is, if it is BE, it means Belgium. It's the name of the country. You also see this market sign in front of each processes. So this, this means the, the, the environmental impacts from cradle to, to the markets. So what are these, the software we can use for, uh, for LCA analysis? CMOPRO, GABI, OpenLCA. So I have also another question. Can you please quickly also answer this one? What LCA software would you be interested in working in? You can, you can either answer on the chat box or on menti.com. Uh, if you quickly answer this, I'm gonna show you how to, this, to do LCA analysis on, on, the, on the software too. So let's check menti. If anybody, if anybody has the answer on Menti. Um, but can you please, uh, or you can also write it in the chat box. Yeah, I can see somebody says CMO Pro. Uh, yeah, so this, this and CMO Pro, yeah. So today we're gonna to work with CMO Pro too. If you also look at the, Papers published on LC, you can see most papers they're using CMOPRO software. This is widely used in LC. And then we have conversion of inventory data. So we estimate the emissions. So for example, we have the data, how much carbon dioxide is emitted and how much methane, how much nitrous oxide and other emissions. So they need to be converted to global warming potential, to acidification, to different impact categories, right? You don't need to calculate it by yourself. I'm just, I'm just explaining what is happening inside the software. For example, in terms of global warming pot potential, if the effect of carbon dioxide is one, on global warming, the effect of methane is 21. So we, it, this, the amount of carbon dioxide emission is this multiplied by one, this one multiplied by 28, and this one by 265. At the end, we have global warming potential, for example, 200 kilogram of carbon dioxide, kilogram of carbon dioxide equivalent. So carbon dioxide equivalent, because carbon dioxide, if carbon dioxide is, yet, is one, uh, the methane is tw 28, right? So, and here is the, um, uh, this is the same thing in the software. You can see the conversion factor for each, each uh, emission, right? Like here in, in impact uh, assessment, in uh, impact word plus is 34 for uh, methane, right? We have also different impact assessment methodology. We call, we call this process impact assessments, converting emissions to like different impact categories. 
And uh, we have impact word plus recipe CML. Normally, if you if you use div, you, you may get same result if you run different impact assessment methodology. Here you can see different impact assessment methodology. Each impact assessment methodology has covered like different types of impact categories. Like the, you can see CML, EDPI, or different impact as, uh, impact assessment methodology. Um, so we have this impact assessment, uh, impact categories assessed by life cycle assessment at the methodology. We call them uh, midpoint, midpoint. These are impact categories or midpoint. These midpoint categories can be converted to endpoints. So how we uh, convert this midpoint to to this endpoint? This also happens in the software. I'm just telling you. All. What is going on inside the software? So, for example, if the global warming potential of one kilogram of animal base is 25 kilogram, we can just convert it using this coefficient to dolly value. So, it, the same things like we express everything under human health endpoint category, category as dolly, daily, daily life adjusted value, right? Daily loss year adjusted value and then we have the inter interpretation once we have the, the we, we have the data we can compare it with other published lca lca result we can do uncertainty analysis the lca is good by i mean it has its own limitation it has there is uncertainty in the lca results if depending on what uh, emission factor you use, you may get different results. The allocation met methodology matters. The selection of functional unit, I gave you an example. Determination of on site emission, which impact assessment methodology you use. So let's start with this CMO Pro software. So this is, this is the software CMO Pro. If you want to use this software, you need to buy the license. Uh, so this, this is like a blank page how you do an LCA study. So this is the output. So in the case of meat, the output is meat, right? Meat production. And then whatever input you use, like water, feed, whatever input that is used, we enter it here. So I'm gonna do an LCA study on cultivated meat production system. And you, you can see how easy it can be an LCA analysis, right? So this is a cultivated meat production. In other words, I mean, some people, they use lab-grown meat, fake meat, or whatever name you want to call it. So for production of lab-grown meats, we have these cells. So we, we get a little bit of cells from li live animal. We don't kill animal. We just uh, collect a little bit cells like in an unpainful procedure. We use unpainful painful uh, procedure to collect cells. And then we immortalize these cells. We make them zombies. And then we feed them. So what, what we use to feed them, like it can be everything, like the same product as you feed the livestock, like soybean, whatever. They also, they also like us, they eat protein, they need carbohydrate, they need sugar, they need vitamin, they need growth factor. So this is this production system, right? And then these are the inputs. So first, if you want to do an LCA study on cultivated meat, you, you need to collect the data. How to collect the data? It can be using a, a, a survey or a, like uh, on-site measurement or literature review or whatever. So let's let's say you have you have collected the data. You need now you know uh, this is based on media. So this is the feed for cells. You need, they use 400 liters of basal, basal media. They, you, you know, the FBA consu FBS consumption is 0 0.19 kilogram. You have this inventory. So you, you, I have to, you can select the functional way like one kilogram of meat production, but here, we have also other product in the system, lactate and uh, ammonia. But here, I, they, I didn't uh, do allocation because this doesn't have economic value for now. 
maybe later they find a way to, to extract lactate in the process. And then if it has uh, economic value, then we can do this allocation uh, approach, right? Now, all these environmental impacts go, go to this own limit production, one kilogram. So we have this inventory of inventory of inputs for one kilogram of meat production. Then we need to use this LCS software. Uh, so let's let me open this uh, CMO pro software. So let's let me close it and open it to start it from the beginning. Uh, CMO pro. So whatever is not, which is not clear, please, you can just ask me right now. You don't need to, to wait until the end of this, uh, this workshop. Uh, so I have already made this library. I just, I'm gonna open it because it takes a lot of time here and we have like only four, 14 minutes. Uh, I just wanna show you, I'll explain you how I entered this, this data. CMO Pro is, is, is the fastest LCS software, but it still takes a little bit of time. So I have made this, this uh, library for these cultivated meats. So this is, so for one kilogram of this, uh, this is the output, output to technosphere, right? So if I had other uh, output in the system, I would add here. But now we have, for now, we have only one, which is cultivated bit. And the input we use, for example, here we use tap, uh, let's see how, how much was the tap water consumption, uh, 17 liters here and 400 liters here. So you can just find in the databases, I found it here on this database. If you, if you look at the details, somebody else has done the LCA analysis of tap water and the data is on CMOPRO. You don't need to go and do the LCA analysis of water production, right? So it's, it's all here. The only thing you need to do to just find this tap water on the database. Uh, so I did the same for every single input use. Um, ah, so this, this is the question somebody asked here, do we have this DMEM or basal media? So this is what I, I was planning to explain now. So for this urea, it was here. For glutamine, it was not on CMOPRO. For tap water, it was on CMOPRO. Electricity was in CMOPRO. You can see electricity here. It is market and GR. I think G GR is Germany. Uh, you, can, you, can, you can use different country. You can see here is Germany, and then you can use the global one. And T GH, I don't know which country is GH, GB, GL. You can find like for, for the inputs like electricity or the energy, you can find databases for, for like, almost every country, because uh, as I mentioned, there are like 12,000 LCS studies. So we have a nice bank. Uh, so how we, so we don't have DM, but if we don't have this one, it's not the end of the world. So why? Because we can make this database, right? So I made the database for DM. So here you can see the, the name is M in DM because I made this, this, this inventory. So how, how I made it? So let's let's find this process. I define another process called uh, this here. So it I couldn't find it on the databases. I ex I extracted the composition of DME in what is in this this uh, basal media, which is mostly amino acids. So I made, so I made another LCA study only for the, but I mean, it is also included this, in this final study. So I extracted the compo composition of this media. And then, so I felt like, for example, it has this amount of this, this specific amino acid. 
it was also it was also not on on the database so i had to make another database for this one let's go to this license more so this is like it has it has several life if you are lucky you may find all the database all like processes for each database each input you have for lcs study but if you are not lucky then you need to make the, um, to do lca for each of these processes the same way as we have done it here and then if you have also uh like uh, wasters like in this case we have wastewater treatment it's clear from its name you just add it here this is the amount of wastewater so you may ask what is this emissions uh, section so in this case there is not there is no direct emission in the production of cultivated meat right but let's say this is rice production example let's open rice uh, if i find it plant production cereal rice so in terms of in the case of rice we have on farm emissions, right? So, on farm emissions, we have like manure. So, you need to estimate this on farm emission and add it here in this section. These are on site emissions. In the case of agriculture, most of the time we have on site emissions. For example, here we have, uh, we have like, let's see, uh, we have like, market for diesel fuel this is only the environmental impacts of the market of diesel fuel so the the environmental impact of consumption of uh, uh, diesel fuel is not included or for fertilizer is the same so you you need to measure estimate it and then um, insert it here you may ask how to do it it is also on the paper, on like literature review or um, on the databases, right? So let's go back to the slides. Um, so the uh, so let's let's run let, let's run one of these uh, let's run this cultivated meat production system. So please let me know if something is not clear. Let me check the chat box. So, you know, I explain how to do this. Uh, so let's, for running this, you just click this here. And then here you choose the impact assessment methodology. I use impact word, but you can just choose any impact method methodology you want. So I normally go for, uh, for this impact word plus. And what is the functional? You need one kilogram. This is all you need to do. And then you need you need to wait for the result. So LCA, we talk about global warming, but LCA doesn't only measure the global warming. We have like it's in the case of this impact assessment methodology, we have 18 different impact categories. So we get result for for all these 18 impact categories in one LCA study. Um, yeah, once you are waiting for this one, feel free to turn on the, your microphone or write down your question on the chat box. So does CMO Pro contains the methodology PF product environmental impacts that uh, I need? To, let me check it. PF, I haven't used that much. Let's check it in the impact assessment methodology. Um, so climate, so this is the result. So this is the global warming protection for one kilogram of cultivated meat production. It's 50 kilogram, it's high because it's lab scale. Uh, so we have short term, we have long term. In this impact assessment, when they say short term, it means 100 years, long term is 500 uh, years time frame. And then we have mineral resources, human health, land use, water scarcity, like 50, six cubic meter only one for one kilogram of meat. We call this, this is the, you can report this one. If you wanna go further, you, if you can convert everything to 
to Dolly or PDF to so let's do endpoint now. Um, so we have this midpoint, which are impact categories. We have endpoint. I'm going to show you the endpoint endpoint result. Um, yeah, once you are waiting for this, oh, this, this yeah, so this is the, uh, this is, so here the results are expressed either based on Dolly or PDF, potentially disappeared fraction of the species. So instead of having based on kilogram carbon dioxide, we have based on Dolly. Based on Dolly, daily adjusted life. Why I always forget this so Daily adjusted years of loss per person, not per person. Yeah. So PDF potentially disappear fraction of a species. Um, so this, let's go back to the slide because we are already uh, 14, 14 minutes. I'm going to tell you also. Other stuff. So for this one, I'm going to give you also another example of rice. So for the, in the case of rice, look at the rice example. So this is rice farm. So we have this, this input consumption, right? Everything is here. So now you have, now you have, now you have a product like, uh, and like a drink, a rice based drink, right? So you want to do an LCA of rice-based drink. How to do that? Uh, for this one, I've made, for example, like you want to do LCA analysis of soju, which is a rice-based drink. So I found this this exists on the database, rice, dried rice. You need tap water. You need tap water for cleaning, for electricity. It is on the database. Packaging is on the database. There is there is no, maybe there is carbon dioxide emission. You can also add the carbon, carbon dioxide emission here. This is the whole LCA study of this dream. This is not a challenging LCA study because you can find these this, this processes on the databases. But in the case of cultivated meat, since a lot of a lot of items were missing. We had to make this in the inventory too. Um, so for for some product, it's easy to do this LCA analysis. Um, and then I'm also coupling this LCA since with the AI modeling. So since this this is data symposium, I wanted to also bring up this issue because we already have twelve thousand. LCA study, doing an LCA is not challenging, right? So what I'm working on, I'm, I'm using this LCA study for to optimize the process, not only evaluate the environmental impacts. So how to do it, we can just couple this methodology with AI, AI modeling. I've already published one. There are also some papers with like joint application of LCA and AI modeling, not to only evaluate the environmental impacts, but also to optimize this production system. Um, uh, yeah, the, this is the end of my presentation. I, I'm super enthusiastic about this subject. Just, just send me an email or if you are at the school, just stop by my office. Thank you.